I could stay like this Forever following you Just don't get too far And I'll be right where you are
So God makes Eve and brings Eve to Adam, thus performing the first wedding ceremony ever. It was Jesus who himself sanctioned marriage in the New Testament when the first miracle he performed occurred at a wedding. And he viewed the importance of it as well. As an institution, it's important to remember that marriage is created by God. Therefore, God gets to govern it and God gets to control it. And God has made this union today for your benefit so that you will have a lifelong partner, so you will have a companion to be with you through thick and thin. Marriage is also in Scripture viewed as a vocation, as a job. That's why we say marriage takes work. When God created Adam and Eve, he gave them a job description. There were things that they were to do. There were responsibilities that they were to fulfill. That still holds true in marriage today. What you're entering, to, entering into today is a vocation. It is a job. It will require work. There are responsibilities. Chief among them, the husband being responsible to, to love his wife well, to love her. Scripture tells us just in the same way that Christ loved the church. And, and for the wife to, to see her husband loving her and, and as he follows Christ to follow him and to, to see two people become one and follow Christ in union would be your vocational aspect of marriage. More than anything, Scripture pictures marriage as a covenant that is made. The book of Malachi chapter 2 verse 14 talks about how that a husband and wife are joined in the covenant of marriage. That's something that's very important in Scripture. It's how God relates to us is within a covenant. It's how God asks us to relate to each other. There's a big difference in the covenant idea of marriage and the contract idea of marriage that our culture has. A covenant is binding. A contract you can get out of. A covenant rests upon both parties being involved. A contract, one person can decide they don't want to be involved and it's null and void. A covenant doesn't have loopholes to escape out of. A contract does. And God has set up this day and this moment for you two to enter into a covenant with each other. And I want to use that imagery for a few minutes just to stress the importance of what you're doing today. We don't really make a lot of covenants between people today in our culture. But in the ancient culture, covenants were commonplace. And whenever a covenant occurred, very symbolic acts took place as well. For example, in the covenant, one person would exchange robes with another. And that was very symbolic of giving the other person everything that one had. All of life's possessions, all of life's duties and responsibilities were to be shared in that covenant. They would also oftentimes exchange weapons with each other when covenants were made between people. And that became symbolic of the obligation of each party involved to defend each other. In marriage, you become your spouse's most ardent defender. You begin to walk through life together through thick and thin, defending each other through adversity. But also exchange belts in a covenant ceremony. And the belt was the part of the armor that held all the other weapons. And as such, the belt became symbolic of power. Today, you give each other your power. You come together no longer as two, but as one. Something very mysterious happens in a marriage where two separate people who, even though they may hang out a lot, and even though they may like one another a lot, something mysterious happens when those two become one, sanctioned by God. And that is certainly something that God will use today as you go into the future with each other. As you prepare to go into this time of entering a covenant with each other, you decided that you would verbalize that commitment through the exchanging of vows. So, Noel, I'll ask you first, will you have Jennifer to be your wife and live together with her in holy marriage? 
Will you love her, comfort her, honor her, respect her, and keep her? And will you forsake all others and be faithful to her as long as you go show up? <coughs> Jennifer, will you have Doyle to be your husband and live with him in holy marriage? Will you love him, comfort him, honor him, respect him, and keep him? And will you forsake all others and be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? You've chosen today to exchange rings as the symbol of your covenant love for one another. These rings are very symbolic. They are made of gold, the purest of metals, symbolizing the purity of your love. They are also in the shape of a serpent that never ends, symbolic of your lifelong commitment to each other today, which will never end. So Doyle, if you would, place Jennifer's ring on the third finger of the left hand. Hold it there and repeat after me. I give you this ring as a symbol of my commitment to you and thereby seal this covenant of marriage. Jennifer, if you would, place the little ring on the third finger of this left hand. Hold it there. I give you this ring as a symbol of my commitment to you. And thereby, seal this covenant of marriage. Doyle and Jennifer, you've exchanged the solemn covenantal vows of marriage. You have given rings as a sign and seal of your covenant by the authority vested in me as a minister of the gospel and by the state of Mississippi, I joyfully pronounce that you are husband and wife. Go all you can kiss your breath. Let's begin the first few minutes of their married life in prayer. Father, we're thankful that you are a God who gives us love, love from you, and that you place within our hearts love for others. We're thankful today that you have brought Doyle and Jennifer to this point in their lives where they have decided to publicly before others and before you commit themselves to each other to become husband and wife. We pray for them in the days, weeks, months, and years ahead as they face adversity, as they face times of blessing, as they face uh, times when they go through violence, that you would use each and every of those moments to strengthen them and to cause your honor and your glory to be shown through their lives. Again, we pray for them today. In Jesus' name, amen. I present to you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Doyle Welch. <laughs> 